If you're looking at starting a career in DevOps, SRE or platform engineering, I can tell you the absolute most important first piece of technology that you must master is Git. In this video, I'll break down the important why and how, and I will suggest what to focus on. Then I'll share you some effective tips that'll set you up for success in a DevOps role, and then set you up for a path of progression where you'll progress faster than your peers. These tips will help you unlock a whole bunch of new avenues that we'll explore today. This will help you progress at a much faster pace in your DevOps career. So without further ado, let's go. Now, the number one reason why Git is so important in modern DevOps, SRE and platform engineering is that it is the single source of truth for everything in IT. Developers use Git to store application code. Platform engineers use it for infrastructure as code and automation scripts things like cloud configuration files. Therefore, we store everything from application source code, automation and CI-CD pipeline definitions, infrastructure and systems definitions, cloud configuration files, declarative configuration, and more, all stored in a single source of truth called Git. Git allows us to store files, it gives us auditing and tracking, acting as a single source of truth. It allows engineers to review changes and collaborate. Therefore, if you're new to a DevOps role, it would be a huge mistake for you to ignore Git because Git underpins everything. Consider it a fundamental launching pad for the next tips that I'll be sharing. But firstly, quick one, most of you are not subscribed. So if you like this video, smash that subscribe button and click the bell so you know when the next episode drops. New engineers always find the command line very daunting. Knowing the command syntax, how to even know what to type, remembering all the commands, the positioning or the ordering of commands, command line arguments and flags. In the ultimate DevOps roadmap that I'm currently building, one of the first chapters that I cover is source control and Git because Git is just so important. And in the Git module, I emphasize how Git can actually help you learn the command line. This is a powerful tip. Let Git become your first stepping stone to the terminal. And as you learn Git, it might be very tempting to jump into a UI tool where you can just click buttons because the command line is so daunting and UI tools are so easy. So my recommendation is as you learn Git, avoid these UI tools and jump straight to the command line and put some effort into immerse yourself into the terminal. So I highly encourage to start living in a terminal, always have a terminal open and start getting used to the commands that you learn in tutorials. A lot of people see this as unproductive. I've got to remember the commands. I've got to type them out over and over. But this repetitive exercise is like exercising a muscle. So you want to start learning the workflow like git status. Then you want to say git add. Add the files to stage them. Then you want to learn how to commit files. And finally push those changes to the upstream git repo. And then your workflow cycle repeats by pulling the latest changes, then you'll edit files again, and then you'll start over. Git status, git add, git commit, git push. So it's very repetitive, but you're working a muscle. You're naturally going to learn how to repeat this cycle and it'll become easier in your mind. Now at first, this might feel like a very unproductive thing to do. Why would I keep typing all this out when I can just use a GUI interface and click, 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 done? This is because there is a lot of natural subconscious progression happening happening within the mind that you might not be aware of as you're following this workflow. Which leads to my second tip. Typing out these commands manually gives you confidence in the terminal. So the longer you spend time in the terminal, the more comfortable you'll become to stay in the terminal. You'll start remembering the commands and things will become like muscle memory. It'll become instinct. You'll not only learn how to type faster, but you'll find other ways to become way more productive, like hotkeys and aliases. I see this as the equivalent of going to a new gym as somebody who wants to work out for the first 
first time and you walk into the gym for the first time and you're overwhelmed by seeing a hundred different types of equipment and machines and you have no idea how to use it. You might lack confidence and you don't want to embarrass yourself. This is why the human mind always jumps to the easiest thing which is a user interface. Well if you sit down at one machine, learn that one machine and become confident, the more you use that one machine, you'll start glancing over to the other machines, you'll naturally build confidence and you'll start getting more comfortable within that gym. Staying in the terminal and learning these git commands not only means you'll master git, and grow your confidence within the terminal, but this will become a stepping stone for other commands. This is extremely important and leads to my next tip learning the command line. Command line is a language. One thing that a lot of people don't realize when they're typing out commands like git commands is that the whole command line thing is like a language. Most people that are new to the command line don't know that a command line is actually self-documenting. You don't have to go and watch tutorials on how commands work. If you forget a command, like you're typing git and you don't know what to type next, you can say git minus h. Now minus h stands for dash dash help, which is a command line flag that most command lines have. So if I'm sitting in a git repo, I can say git dash dash help if I forgot what command to run. And it will actually tell me the usage that I have to type git followed by arguments and commands. And it also gives me the list of commands I can run. So here we have git status that we used earlier. We have git add, we have git commit, and we have git pull and git push. So this helps you when you forget the commands or you forget what sort of arguments or flags that they support. It also helps you check capabilities of a command line tool. And over the years I have found this to be insanely useful when branching off and learning other command line tools, especially tools like cloud command line interfaces like the Microsoft Azure CLI or the Amazon AWS CLI. If I want to set up a virtual server on an EC2 network, I can do this all from the command line. But the important thing here is that the command line is actually self-documenting. So I can grow my command line knowledge by using this paradigm. And I can do all of this without having to leave the terminal. So by learning Git and learning the command line language and how all tools conform to standards, everything you learn when you're looking at the Git CLI will translate into other command line tools. So if I'm working in Azure Cloud and I want to spin up a VM, I can say AZ dash dash help and I can explore the command line without knowing much about the tool. I can then look through the potential options and I can see there's AZ VM and this is to manage Linux or Windows virtual machines. Then to find out more, I can say azvm dash dash help, press enter. This will tell me everything about this VM subcommand and give me all the commands I can run under a VM. Then I can look at a command like create, which allows me to create an Azure virtual machine. So if I want to know how to do that, I can say azvm create dash dash help and I can explore that. It gives me examples, tells me exactly how to create a virtual machine. And it gives me all the command line options and flags for how I may want to modify this virtual machine. Things like give it a version of Linux I want, a name, a virtual network, do I want a static IP address and things like that. But what I'm getting to here is that from learning Git as a newcomer to DevOps and learning to live in the terminal and then learning and getting comfortable with the terminal, getting comfortable with the command line, understanding command line language, getting comfortable with other tools, and then learning how to navigate all of these tools. And it all started by building my confidence in the command line. And all those tips are so important because it leads into other avenues like learning Linux learning docker so how do you manage containers you do that through the command line and the docker cli is very similar and conforms to the same standards as the git command line and then you'll start learning things like kubernetes so now i can be like okay what can i do with kubernetes i follow the same standard dash dash help it tells me how to use kubectl okay i can create a resource so i say kubectl and i want to know more let's say create dash dash help it tells me how to use the 
create command, I can go ahead and create a deployment. So if I want to know how to do that, I can say kubectl create deployment dash dash help. And it tells me how to create a deployment. I can give a name and an image. And it tells me all the options I can pass in. It even gives me some examples. This whole minus H or dash dash help flag is a Unix and Linux convention that many modern CLI tools conform to. Now, hopefully you've started to see the synergy here between all these tips and how it links to something as simple as Git. Learning Git, spending time in the terminal, building confidence, building that muscle memory, getting better at typing, learning command line and how to navigate commands and building that skill, which all transfers into other command line tools and technologies. And it doesn't stop there. All of this will lead to another tip or another skill command line will ultimately improve your scripting. Learning the command line this way will ultimately lead into writing better automation scripts, things like Bash and PowerShell. This will naturally happen as you're improving your command line skill and capabilities. Git is also a foundation of automation and other popular practices such as GitOps. Many popular CICD tools and automation tooling, tooling that uses concepts like infrastructure as code and declarative configuration may rely on this thing called GitOps. GitOps is a code-based infrastructure and operational procedure that relies on Git as a source control system. GitOps allows us to ensure that the state of a production system matches the state in Git, which is the source of truth. GitOps is an operating model or a methodology built on top of Git. With GitOps, you deploy a tool that runs and looks at the state in Git. Git is your source of truth. So your declarative infrastructure as code all lives in Git. So you have auditing, tracking, collaboration, code review, and all of that benefit. Then the GitOps tool looks at that source of truth and monitors the actual infrastructure and it ensures that what's in Git matches the actual infrastructure. So if someone makes a manual change on the infrastructure, the GitOps tool may revert that change. So the only way to make a change to your infrastructure is by checking in the change into Git and going through the Git review process. Now for GitOps, you may want to use tools like Flux CD, Argo CD, Jenkins, GitHub Actions, GitLab, Terraform and more. This leads me to another very important topic. Why it's so important to learn Git is because Git will naturally progress you into a modern concept called desired state. With Git being our source of truth, it is ultimately the place where we store our desired state. In DevOps, the desired state refers to the ideal and consistent configuration that a system, application or infrastructure component should be in. Desired state solves for a number of things. Declarative configuration. Instead of writing scripts that specify a sequence of commands to reach a certain state, desired state configuration define the end state that is expected. This is one of the big challenges when writing scripts. A sequence of commands that can fail anywhere. It means you have to handle errors, network failures, which means you produce a more complex script. This is where the whole desired state paradigm helps and tools like Kubernetes. Kubernetes uses declarative configuration as a desired state and it attempts to synchronize the desired state with the actual state. This means that we don't need imperative line by line commands and scripts that can fail in order to achieve an outcome. We can simply create a deployment by building up a configuration file where we say exactly what we want. We say we want a deployment how many replicas we want, what container image to run, the ports to expose, things like configuration, how to receive traffic, how to load balance, all of that stuff becomes declarative with the source of truth being stored back in Git. Now, hopefully that allowed you to see that something as small and insignificant as Git can actually lead to stepping stones to various other topics and skills that you can develop command line, scripting, automation, to modern declarative DevOps. Many people overlook these stepping stones. Hopefully these tips help you become the best engineer that you can be. Check out my link down below to my ultimate DevOps roadmap, where you can follow along with the development of this DevOps roadmap. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe, hit the bell. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.